am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, it's Tim Walls, that's who the VP pick is, and I incorrectly predicted in one of my uh, top eight picks videos that he would not be selected, but I brought back six of the cards that were from the last two draws of that video to see how I may have misinterpreted them, and I've got a little uh, more detail here about who Tim Walls is, and he's quite, quite, quite impressive. So. We'll take a look at him again. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Okay, so we're gonna talk about uh, Tim Walls in a little more detail today. And I'm gonna review some of the cards that I picked, um, that I drew uh, when I did a reading on him. So Tim Walls was born April 6th, 1960 in West Point, Nebraska. So he's 60. Um, one. He worked blue-collar manufacturing job after high school. Two, Tim later graduated from Chadron State College in Nebraska with a teaching degree and was a social studies teacher and a football coach in the Mankato, Minnesota school district. Um, next, Walls enlisted in the Army National Guard at age 17. He served in the National Guard for 24 years after enlisting. Then during his uh, military career, he had posting in Arkansas, Texas, uh, the Arctic Circle, uh, New Ulm, Minnesota, don't know where that is, and elsewhere. He trained in heavy artillery. And during his service, he worked in disaster response postings following floods and tornadoes and was deployed uh, overseas on active duty for months. In 1989, he earned the title of Nebraska's Citizen Soldier of the Year, and he was deployed post 9-11 for a half year to Europe to support Operation Enduring Freedom. Look that up. Uh, his decorations included the Army Commendation Medal, two Army Achievement Medals, and Waltz attained the rank of Command Sergeant Major Command Sergeant Major near the end of his service, but he retired as, to, as a Master Sergeant. Um, it had to do with a benefit situation that was in 2005. He was elected to the United States House of Representatives for Minnesota's first congressional district in 2006. So right out of uh, when he finishes um, the National Guard. Defeating six-term Republican incumbent, he was re-elected five times until 2019 uh, he represented Minnesota's first congressional district, representing a large, mostly rural section of southern Minnesota. And he resigned Congress because he was elected as Minnesota's 41st governor, his first term. Then he defeated uh, he defeated the Republican nominee. Then he was reelected in 2022, uh, defeating another Republican nominee. So he has won consecutively no less than eight political contests. On August 6, 2024, Vice President Kamala Harris announced her selection of Tim Waltz as her running mate in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. And I heard that the night before she went to bed not knowing who it would be. That Many believe she had it narrowed down to Shapiro and Waltz. So she went to bed not knowing who it was. The next day on the 6th, she woke up and uh, she uh, decided it's Waltz and she started calling all the other candidates to let them know that it wasn't them. So he's been a history teacher, a football coach, a decorated army veteran, a six times elected congressman, a two times elected governor, and the VP top pick from a field of eight impressive candidates. So this guy has got something. Let's get behind him and now we'll pull some cards. So here we go. Oh, well, let me check this camera to make sure it's uh, working properly. It looks like it is. Okay, so these are the six uh, cards that I pulled um, the last time I did a, uh, a reading about Tim Walls. The second to the last draws, the second to the last, uh, the second to the last draw, and then the final draw here. So uh, like that. So in the second to the last draw I did, I uh, this was asking if he'd be in the top three. These are the three cards that I had, which are impressive cards. They are the Eight of Wands. Lots of issues in the air. I'm not sure how I interpreted it at the time, but knowing what I know now, 
of course, they take on a whole new meaning. And look at how bright they are. So it looks like this is a person who is, you know, managing all these issues at the same time, all these wands. The emperor puts him in supreme charge. And then the sun card just shows a light on his brilliance. So whatever made me interpret those any other way, of course, now knowing what was going on, they take on a whole other meeting. Let me know what you think about that. Then the final draw was if he would be her pick. And they were uh, the Seven of Swords. They were the King of Swords. And they were materialism. So this led me to say that he wouldn't get the pick. The Seven of Swords is interesting because now that I look at it, knowing what I know before, there were two choices that she had gone to bed in her mind with. She had left all the others behind and just two were left. And then the King of Swords now kind of looks like he came out on top. And then uh, the materialism card, typically this is associated with the devil card being tied to the devil. But I look at it a little better now and it almost looks more like the magician. And I, I should look that up because what this guy has in control, he has the cups, he has the uh, pentacles, he has the swords, and he has the wands. So I think I incorrectly was uh, connecting this as uh, associated with the devil card because it said materialism but this is the magician this is the magician you can make things happen so yeah i'm not perfect uh, i'm um have biases and so that's why it's so important for you to look at the cards and let me know what you're seeing in there because what you, obviously what you're seeing is certainly as valid and looks like sometimes more valid than what i might uh, interpret but uh, now uh, we'll go ahead and uh, see uh, how they're going to do, of course, uh, with less confidence in my interpretive abilities, of course. But that's uh, part of this, uh, this game, isn't it? Um, I don't know if what I'm saying is correct or not. And uh, it's important for you to look at what's coming out here. But I do believe that there's some, some guidance coming from somewhere. Because so many times, it's so, what I lay out is so on the mark. But before I do any of that, let's have again, just a moment of meditation. So now what we're going to do is a full uh, Celtic cross for Tim Waltz uh, and to some extent uh, Kamala Harris, but uh, mostly focusing on his, <clears throat> his, his contribution to the campaign. So I'm going to take six cards to begin with and then another four to complete the uh, Celtic cross at the end. So six cards in the beginning. One, two, three, four, five. And six. You know, I try to just <clears throat> quickly read out what the cards mean to me so that I don't give them too much thought. But I think I had just studied all those candidates in my head and over those several days that I kept doing drawings for each of them uh, too much. The uh, signifier card for Tim Waltz in this race and with an edge for Kamala Harris in here is uh, the Knight of Pentacles. So he's the fighter for the value of this race. He is a fighter for the value of this race. The challenge to that for Tim Walls uh, is the Seven of Pentacles. Again, Pentacles are value or money and never knowing if you've done enough. So this could be fundraising. This could be actually gathering up votes. But the challenge to being the Knight is uh, worrying that you haven't done enough before you moved on to your next battle. The uh, basis of all of this then is, of course, the Ace of Pentacles. It's that great big offering. It's the, the cherished prize. It's the winning the ticket or raising the money that's needed. And since all of this right here is Pentacles, I'm going to say a lot of this is money-wise because it takes money to make this happen. In the past of this reading then is the Ace of Cups. So the time for um, uh, emotion and for um, is is past, okay? We've gotten past that and we're on to doing some real work. In the sky of this is the Queen of Pentacles. So this is Kamala Harris. So he's the knight and she's the queen. 
look at that. So the aim is to keep that value or that money or both coming in. And then the uh, final outcome for this, look at this, is the star card. So that's beautiful. So the first part of this Celtic cross, which is a dyadic cross actually, we've got, uh, we finish up with the star card. He's the knight fighting for value. He's challenged by not, not being sure if he's done enough to either gather votes or money or both. Um, the basis of this whole thing is getting a solid grip on the value that they're going to need. The time for emotions is in the past and it's time to put hard work in the front and Kamala is at the head of this reading as the Queen of Pentacles and then both of them come up to the end as with the star card. But let's see how this finishes off for them uh, in this reading. Uh, four more cards, one at a time. The very self of that question of how the, oh wow, I dropped my card. Okay, I've got to go to the floor and grab it, so stay right there. That wasn't pretty, maybe I'll cut that piece out. Um, okay, so the, signif the signified card for that question, the very self of that question is the Ten Commandments, Happy Family. This is the Republican Party, this is the United States, this is uh, Kamala and Tim Walls and us, their children. Okay, so that's the basis of all of this is getting the family together. The um, environment that that's in, however, is this ace of wands, lots of actions fighting them every step of the way. Big ace of wands fighting, uh, challenging that happy family. The hopes and the fears for that is ah, the secrets being revealed. I just had an inkling in that last reading I did about Tim Walsh. There's something there. And then the... Um, final outcome then is judgment and I think this is a good judgment it's everything coming together to make the determination that this is the team uh, to make it happen that's what I see hey I'm gonna show you the cards now hang on a minute. so this is the radiant Rider weight tarot this is US game systems and I love these cards they're they're called radiant because the colors in them you'll see they actually kind of radiate from the center out and they're brilliant colors so that's the deal. They, they're the same uh, art uh, of the regular Rider weight cards, but they're colored a little differently uh, in this case. So um, I'll show you the cards. They're really nice. I mean, they're the traditional um, symbolism that you expect. Just the coloring is uh, a little or a lot more nuanced, as a matter of fact, with this radiant um, situation where the color just kind of emanates out from the center. This is a good one to look at for that. I mean, you can see that it's a lighter color here and it just radiates out and all the colors are very bright, vibrant and beautiful. So love the cards. Hopefully you do too. I think they show up really well on the camera. And I just do this little uh, situation of spreading the cards out like this uh, so that you can get a chance to look at them. Most people like to see what all the cards look like. And uh, if you're working with someone, it's maybe a good idea to let them uh, work with the cards this way just to kind of get their energy uh, into the cards and, uh, and then you can start uh, deciding what they mean for them.